Vandiyadeva saw how Aditha Karikalar was in danger. In the blink of an eye, he brought the horse to work and put the work in his hand on the pig. The vine poked up the skin of the pig's back. The pig shook its body into a huff and turned around. At that speed, Vandiyathevan's grip on the vel slipped. The vel, which was lightly on the pig's back, slipped and fell. The pig now ran back towards Vandiyadeva. He realized his perilous position. A boar's attack cannot be countered by his horse. Not even in hand. The prince is still trying to emerge from under the horse. He can only survive if he jumps over a tree while on the horse. See you. After running away from so many dangers, the abomination must finally be killed by a wild boar. Fortunately there was a downed tree nearby. Vandiyadeva jumped from his horse and grabbed a branch of a tree. Using all his strength from foot to shoulder, he got up and climbed onto the branch. At the same time the pig kicked his horse. The horse managed to stumble and run away. Kari Kaler was still lying under the horse. Vandiyathevan was on the tree branch. The wild boar stood between the two and looked back this way and that. Vandiyadeva knew that the boar was deliberating on which of the two enemies to attack. The prince has yet to come out free from the horse. He doubted whether he would be able to deal with the boar's attack at the moment even though it had come out. He had no immediate weapon in his hand. Bend the bow and shoot the arrow. He may have been seriously injured by falling under the horse. In any case, it is necessary to give the prince some respite. Vandiyadeva thought and came to a decision in the flash of lightning. Shaking the branch he was on, he let out a loud Agaooku sound. His strategy worked. The pig ran furiously towards the tree he was on. Let him come, let him come and knock on the tree, Vandiyadeva was thinking, when he sat down and the branch of the tree that he had shaken broke. God! What is the danger? If it falls to the ground with a branch? The next minute the boar's fangs would tear him to shreds. The only way to survive is to jump and grab onto another branch. He tried to jump like that. The branch he was trying to grab was too far away so only one hand grabbed it. The favorite branch was so thin that it bent. The handle began to slip, the legs wobbled. Okay. He had to fall down and die immediately. No doubt. Something, finally managed to save Aditha Kari Kaler? Wouldn't the youngest brat be delighted to know this? Will she shed a single tear for her death? A terrible noise was heard. At the same time the handle slipped. Vandiyadeva closed his eyes tightly. He fell down saying that, he lost consciousness while falling. When Vandiyathevan came to his senses and woke up, he saw Atatakarakala splashing water on his face. Suddenly he sat up straight and said, Prince. Are you alive? He said. Yes, I am still alive because of your grace, said Atatakarakala. What happened to the wild boar? He asked. There. The wild boar lay dead where the prince had pointed. Vandiyathevan looked at it for a while and said, O oh king! What has caused such a small animal to suffer? What Kantamaran said about the wild boar is true. How did you kill it in the end? He asked. I didn't kill your butt and you did. Said the prince. Vandiyadeva looked at the prince's face as if he did not understand its meaning. You have made good use of my work. But I have done nothing? Am I helpless to help you in your time of danger? He said. Didn't you grab a branch and shake it? Then I got off the horse and took your job. I used all the anger that was raging in my heart on this pig. When it was stabbed by the fence, it squealed terribly. My ears seemed to be deaf. But the fence alone didn't kill it. You you slipped from a tree branch and fell on it, you died from the shock. Kari Kaler said and laughed. Vandiyathevan also thought and laughed. Rubbing his body, he said, it seems that I escaped unhurt only because I fell on a boar. Now I can believe that Mahavishnu incarnated and killed Irani Adson. Father! What a ferocious animal! Don't judge Vargavatara by looking at this little wild boar, brother. 
there is a boar with a single horn on its head in the forests of the Vindhya hills to the north. It is almost as big as an elephant. If you were such a boar and knocked the tree you were climbing on, think that the tree would have died. Said the prince. Vandiyathevan said, the tree would have broken down and the grass they had thrown would have been broken. Our fate would have been the same. The enemies of the Chola clan would have had nothing to do. Brother. Tell me the truth. Did you throw the job as soon as my horse stumbled and fell? Did you throw it at the wild boar? Did you throw it at me? Adittharakalar asked. Vandiyathevan got angry and said, Sir. Are you really asking this question? If you had such doubts, then there was no need to save me by killing the pig. He said. Yes, yes. I mustn't doubt you. If you hadn't waved the branch and cried out, the pig would have been Yama to me. But for a moment I had such a doubt when you were at work. Nowadays I doubt anything and anyone I see. Yama keeps following me. I could not get rid of the delusion. I also thought that Yama had come to kill me in the form of this pig. Then it has gone very well. King. Yama who followed them is dead, what is the matter now? We have won the race with Kant Hamara. Should we go with the pig in tow? Can't we leave? Said Valavarayan. We have to leave. But what's the rush? Let's stay here for a while and get tired, said the prince. It's the first time I've heard you say you're tired. Yes, you must have had a hard time getting under the horse. It is nothing, the weariness of the soul is greater than the weariness of the body. Shall we go the way we came? Will we not have to travel with those fools again? What if we cross this lake rather than that? God! You mean to swim across this ocean-like lake? Do you mean to save me from the pig and drown me in the lake? Vandiyathevan said. You don't know how to swim, remember. Even I can't swim across a lake this big. A boat would make things easier. We saw a boat a little while ago, it's beached itself somewhere recently. What if we find it? What will become of the horses? Shall we leave them to feed the wild beasts? Vandiyathevan said. Immediately he remembered something and jumped up as if startled, Sir. Where is the tiger? He asked. I forgot about that too. It's going to be hidden somewhere on the side. Maybe you can follow me in tiger form instead of in pig form. Said the prince. Both looked around. After watching for a while, Vandiyathevan said, There. He pointed out. The channel that brought water into the lake narrowed to the north. At such a narrow place a large tree fell on the canal and was touching both the banks. The two men noticed that the tiger was slowly crawling across the wooden bridge and approaching the shore. The same thought arose in the minds of both men. Aha! The women in the boat! Both said at the same time. Later, those women must have landed on the shore of the island next to this channel, said Valavarayan. A wounded panther is very dangerous said the prince. The tiger must be killed along with the pig. How do we cross this ditch? Can't horses go over the wooden bridge? There's only a little water, let's go down. Karakalar's horse also got up and stood near the horse of Vandiyadeva. As if the masters were talking privately, they were also talking about the danger that just happened before them. Both of them jumped on their horses, they let the horses down in the ditch. There is not much water in the canal. But there was a lot of mud and dirt. The horses stumbled and staggered. Thinking of the mud pits in which Kadakar was buried, Deva took heart and said, This mud is nothing wonderful. He also started telling Kari Kaler about it. Friend! Have you gone to speak of the mud without? What do you think of the mud within men? Do you know how hard it is for those who once descend into the mud of evil intentions to get ashore again? Kari Kaler asked. Vandiyadeva thought that the prince's heart was indeed muddled. The horses reached the shore with great effort. Both of them went into the forest very cautiously, looking from all sides. Kari Kaler had his bow and arrow ready. 
Vandiyathevan was also keeping his work ready to throw at the tiger. Suddenly, drowning out the sounds normally heard in the jungle, a woman's screech screamed, Mother! Mother! Tiger! was heard shouting. At the same time that she saw the leopard on the branch of the Manamegala tree, a female friend who was working in cooking in Vasantha Mandapam also screamed after seeing the tiger. The voice fell on the ears of both friends and caused romanchanam. They spurred their horses on in the direction of the voice. As they turned a bend in the shore of the lake the sight they saw startled and horrified them both. While Nandini and Manamegali were going down the steps to take a bath, a leopard was slowly crawling up on a nearby branch. The leopard, which was badly beaten and injured in the fight with the boar, was in a position to save its life. But this was not known to anyone except the tiger. The next moment Carrie Kaler and Vandiyadeva thought that the leopard was going to pounce on the women standing in the water. Vandiyathevan hesitated to use the work. He was afraid of what he would do if he failed and fell for women. Carrie Kaler had no such hesitation and drew the arrow from the bent bow with good aim. The arrow missed and hit the leopard's stomach. The panther let out a ferocious roar and pounced on the women beyond. In the next moment it was a complete confusion, unable to see clearly what had happened. Both the leopard and the girls suddenly disappeared. After a few moments all three poked their heads out of the water at different places. The blood mixed with the water of the lake and became Chikoseville. 